Okay, today we are going to be studying exponents. An exponent is a superscript number or value following another number or value that is a command to multiply a term times itself a given number of times. Example, a to the fifth equals a times a times a times a times a. 2 to the third equals 2 times 2 times 2. And just so you'll be familiar with exponent terminology, a with an exponent of 5 is spoken of as a to the fifth. And fifth is understood as to the fifth power. a with an exponent of 2 is a squared. And a with an exponent of 3 is a cubed or a to the third. The product rule of exponents is as follows. a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. So let's apply that rule. a cubed times a squared equals a to the fifth. And I know what you're thinking because I thought the same thing in high school. Why are we adding if we're multiplying? Well, we're adding the exponents, not the a's. We're adding the exponents. And let me show you why that works. a cubed, or a to the third, is a times a times a. a squared is a times a. So what do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're multiplying a times itself five times, so that'd be a to the fifth, wouldn't it? That is why we add instead of multiplying. Now let's look at something else. Okay, in this problem we have three squared times three to the sixth times three. What is that going to equal? That is going to equal three to the ninth. And you're thinking, wait a second, 2 plus 6 is 8, and I don't see an exponent here. Well, there is an exponent there. The exponent there is 1, but we don't write the 1. It is superfluous. Remember that word? I know we're getting into English, but superfluous means extra and not needed. So, if uh, every term in the world is understood to be to the first power, that is to the exponent of 1, if an exponent is not written there. So now we have 2 plus 6 plus 1 gives us that 9 that we wanted. Now let me show you with our variable x. What is the coefficient of that x? It's 1. Remember that? We talked about that previously, that when you write a variable and you don't write a coefficient in front of the variable, the coefficient is understood to be 1. So what would the exponent be? It is understood to be 1 also. Now, you know that all the lessons that we've gone through, most of the variables we've written, actually up to date, I don't think we've used exponents. So almost all the numbers and almost all the variables that we've written do not have a coefficient and do not have an exponent. Now can you imagine if everything we wrote down we had to put a 1 in front of it and an exponent of 1? It would get a little bit ridiculous and so just to make life a little easy on ourselves and all this not be so cumbersome, we just write x. And right here we just wrote 3. We don't, now it might be nice to put that 1 up there because all the other numbers, all the other 3's have exponents. And you can do that while you work just to remind yourself. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to do that. Put that 1 up there while you're doing the work just to remind you don't forget to count that 3. Now let's do another problem. Now that's not as bad as it looks and let's multiply that out. But before we do, why don't we add the exponent of 1 to all the variables that don't have an exponent? 
Well, the first thing that we want to do is to multiply out the coefficients. 2 times 5 is 10, and our x's have an exponent of 3, and 1 is x to the 4th. And now let's multiply out our y's. We have y to the 5th plus y to the 2nd, or y squared, would be y to the 7th. And we have a z exponent of 1 and a z exponent of 3. And that is the answer when we multiply all of this out or we simplify it is 10 x to the 4th, y to the 7th, z to the 4th. Now let's see what happens when we divide variables with exponents. The quotient rule of exponents is when a to the m is divided by a to the n, it will equal a to the m minus n. And that makes sense. Uh, what's the opposite of multiplication? It's division. And what is the opposite of addition? It's subtraction. So if you use addition on exponents when we're multiplying, when we're dividing, you should use subtraction. And we'll see how that works. We have a to the fifth over a squared, and 5 minus 2 is a cubed or a to the third. Now normally I like to say a cubed and you won't hear me say a to the third. You might, but whatever you hear me say, you need to know that either one of those terms is good. And since we're just learning this today, I'm going a little bit easy on you, but in the future, if you hear a to the cubed, you should know that it's a with an exponent of three. Now let's see how that works. a to the fifth is a times itself five times and a squared is a times a. So a to the fifth divided by a squared is a times a times a times a times a. <laughs> I hope I said that five times. Divided by a times a. Now if you remember in our previous lessons, as long as there isn't a plus sign or a minus sign here, we're multiplying all of that a over a is 1. So we can cross out an a on the top if we cross out an a on the bottom. And it looks like we can do that again. And what do we have left? We have nothing on the bottom. Both those a's are crossed out and we have three a's on the top. a times a times a, which is a cubed. Now you don't want to be doing this every time. I'm only doing this to show you why this is true. This is just some nonsensical mathematical philosophy. This is really the way it works. So let's try another problem. I want to do this with numbers so that you can see that this works the same way with numbers as it does with variables. So 7 to the 13th divided by 7 to the 5th is 7 to the 8th. And that is a very large number if you multiply that out. I think it's over 5 million. We're not going to do that. But I do want you to see something else that's really important. We can only do this. We can only add and subtract exponents if the number is the same, 2 over 2, or 7 over 7. Or the variable is the same, a over a, b over b, x over x, y over y, whatever. They have to be the same. And so let's try one last problem. Okay, that's similar to our last multiplication problem, except that we're dividing. And I see a couple of variables there without exponents. So let's put exponents in there. Okay, 5 over 2 can't be divided unless you want to put 2.5 in there. And you don't mix decimals with fractions. Don't do that. And so why don't we just leave it alone? 5 over 2. Let's see. a cubed over a to the 1 
we'll eliminate that a on the bottom and the a cubed up here is going to become a squared and b to the fifth over b cubed is going to eliminate that b cubed on the bottom and the b on top is going to be to the fifth minus three which is b squared and c squared over c to the one eliminates that c on the bottom and the c on top becomes c squared minus one two minus one is c to the one but of course that one is superfluous so i answer is five a squared b squared c over two and we have a bunch of clutter on the bottom so let's get rid of that so there you go that's what that should look like we've discussed that before these letters can be like right in the middle there that's fine i don't care if they're on the top or right in the middle where that bar is but that's your final answer and that is the end of our introduction to exponents